Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast with Essan Koman, Head of Commodities, ESG and Emerging Markets Research EMEA. It's Friday, 5th of May, 2023. And in this week's podcast, Essan discusses Turkey's election outlook. The following podcast is intended for professional investors and eligible counterparties only, and not for retail clients. Any content should not be regarded as an offer to conduct investment business or an investment recommendation, but for information purposes only. Esan, Turkey is gaining a lot of attention in recent weeks, with the presidential and parliamentary elections set to take place on the 14th of May. Can you offer our listeners what markets can expect for the actual election results? Thanks, Lina. So yes, Turkey's forthcoming presidential and parliamentary elections will be unlike any before. In recent years, President Erdogan took a series of steps to tilt the balance in his favour. Yet despite these moves, Turkey's growing economic challenges make Erdogan's re-election bid his hardest in over two decades. Now, at face value, the majority of recent polls put opposition candidate Kemal Kelek Daoglu in the lead for the presidential race. For the parliamentary race, support for both the AKP and MHP, which is the current governing coalition, and the CHP and the IYI, the two largest opposition parties, is fluctuating around 40%. Now, cohabitation scenarios where control of the presidency and parliament is split between two opposing camps does remain possible and could lead to uncertainty over policy direction. Now, having said that, in addition to appointing the Minister of Treasury and Finance, the president also has the power to make central bank appointments and to prepare a budget. And this suggests that winning the presidency is likely to be more important for the near-term implementation for macro policies. Now, Una, manifestos from the governing AKP and the opposition camp suggest sharply divergent macro priorities. Indeed, the AKP's manifesto, which was published last month, focuses on strong growth, averaging 5.5% over the next four years, low single-digit inflation, and a current current surplus. And critically, though not stated explicitly, the promise to deliver a current account surplus suggests that the AKP policymakers are unlikely to move away from the current unconventional macro framework in our view, as they have previously argued that negative real rates and various liberalization strategies are key to improving Turkey's balance of payments dynamics. Now, meanwhile, indications are that an opposed opposition victory will see the implementation of a stabilization program focused on addressing macro imbalances and resting on three key pillars, that is macro policy adjustments, banking sector stress tests, and a new fiscal framework. Now, it is not known yet who would lead the economic portfolio if the opposition won, and we don't expect this to be announced before the votes. But importantly, the political timetable also has the potential to complicate or delay any policy adjustment. But comments from the opposition coalition indicate that it could lay out a more detailed roadmap on the sequencing of policy steps in the days before the election, which could help provide some clarity regarding the near-term outlook. So all in all, Una, the tight race for the presidential and parliamentary uh, is upon us with a wide array of outcomes to consider. Thanks, Essan. And drilling down into the details, what can be expected from an economic and financial market impact post the elections? So, you know, a few reflections, and first things first and out is, this is a great deal of uncertainty as the trajectory of financial assets will be shaped by several pivotal factors that are challenging to predict at the current juncture. With that, let me break down our key avenues on our radar. So first, with rising expectations of more conventional economic policymaking after the, election, after the elections, the speed and the size of the envisaged interest rate hikes have attracted a great deal of attention. Now, in this respect, the consensus forecast is for the policy rate in Q3 and Q4, which currently stands at 25.5% and 27% respectively. In our view, the envisaged policy rate by the consensus of 27% in Q4 probably falls in the lower bound of the required adjustment in the policy rate under the normalization process. That is the secular deterioration in inflation dynamics and de-anchoring risks suggest to us that a stronger adjustment bringing the policy rate to about 
32 to 35 percent or even higher may prove more prudent. Secondly, the likely Turkish lira against the US dollar trajectory post elections has also attracted a great deal of attention. And in this context, whether the lira is overvalued has stimulated much debate recently. Now, from a fundamental standpoint, we believe that it would be difficult to argue that the lira is overvalued if one considers the fact that the currency has been weakening for quite a while. That is, however, not to say that the exchange rate, of course, is currently at a market clearing level. Indeed, we recognize that an adjustment is likely in the event of a gradual relaxation of the prevailing regulatory measures that have resulted in non-clearing of financial markets. And in this context, however, we would caution against relying on single point fair value estimates for the lira as a disequilibrium in the FX market is largely driven by regulatory measures that impose certain constraints on capital movements. And finally, Essan, you've been mentioning to me that irrespective of the outcome, a period of painful adjustment is ahead. Can you summarise this for our listeners? Sure, indeed, Una. So the magnitude of Turkey's imbalances, that's high inflation, large external shortfalls, depleted central bank reserve, does require a period of adjustment regardless of the election outcome in our view. Now, implementing the stabilization program outlined by opposition could allow for this process to unfold in a more orderly manner and a predictable policy framework could help anchor medium-term expectations. Now, while sticking with the current policy mix, meanwhile, is likely to lead to more uncertainty and potentially more volatility, we think that this is likely to be even true if growing depreciation pressures ultimately led by central bank is, is, is led to interest rate hike. Now, policymakers have given no indications that they are prepared to move away from regulatory controls to manage FX demand and banking sector restrictions to manage the pace as well as the quality of lending growth, even if the central bank does raise its key rates. Indeed, the central bank has delivered sizable rate hikes in the past under the leadership of different governors, but these were largely emergency measures taken to stabilize a fallen currency and were all reversed prematurely. Thank you very much for sharing your insight, Essan. Have a great week and we will catch up with you again next week. Thanks, Una. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to this MUFG Global Markets podcast. Rate, review and subscribe and contact your MUFG sales rep for more information. Come back next week for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.